All right, welcome to this uh, video tutorial lesson. Uh, it's on operations with radical exponents. So what we're gonna do in this particular video is we're gonna go back to uh, just operations with exponents. So I'm gonna review here the power rule, uh, the product rule, and the quotient rule. So that's what you're gonna need to be able to do these. Um, except now we're gonna be doing them with rational exponents, which we learned the other, the other day, which was um, uh, fractions for exponents. So here we go, let's go through these really quick. So what we've got is the power rule states, okay, that if you have a group, okay, of a, anything with a base, all right, so if you have a group of anything, you can take the exponent of the base and multiply it by the exponent that is on the group. So in other words, you get x to the a times b, all right, straightforward. Uh, product rule. So product rule states that if you have a base and you're multiplying it by another group, okay, that also has the same base, what you can do is you can take the A and the B here, so just representing their exponents, and you can add them. Now, I want you to understand that X to the A times X to the B is the same as if I wrote them as individual groups, because in algebra, there's two ways we represent multiplication, which is with this dot, or we represent it with back-to-back -back parentheses. So this one can get confusing sometimes because some people see parentheses and they think it's the power rule. On the outside, okay? All right, so quotient rule. Quotient rule states that if you have a fraction, all right, and you have a base with an exponent divided by the same base with an exponent, okay, that you can take their exponents and subtract them. Now, what's important is the order. So subtraction has order with it. So you must take the numerator and you must subtract the denominator from it, okay? As time goes on, these will get a little bit more challenging, uh, but for right now, that's it. But uh, at this point, I gotta, I gotta get something, um, gotta get my soul flow in here, so, uh, Give me a second here. Wow, you can really dance. Wow, you can really dance. He went, he went. They said we've both been dancing all this time. What a coincidence. He did it again. He did it again. <laughs> Back to the math. Okay, so here's some uh, problems with the product rule as examples. So remember, product rule states that if you have like bases, Okay, so x and x are like bases that I can take their exponents and I can add them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write them as their like base, and I'm going to write the quantity of 1 half plus 3 fourths. Okay, so at this point, now I'm thinking about, okay, all I'm thinking about is trying to do 1 half plus 3 fourths. Now, I'm hoping by, you know, ninth grade or this level of algebra 2, you're able to kind of do this one in your head. But uh, please do remember that to add fractions, you must have like denominators. So this 2 must become the same base as the 4. So 1 half can easily be turned into something with a base of 4, okay, just by multiplying top and bottom by 2. So what I get is x to the 2 fourths plus 3 fourths. And now all I have to do is add my numerators together, and I get x to the sorry, x raised to the 2 plus 3 is 5, all over 4. And at this point, I'm now done. I'll leave it just like that. Okay, next example. So next example, a little bit more challenging, because you have 1 eighth and you have 2 thirds, and those denominators, okay, can't be immediately turned into the other one like the one could be 4. But don't worry, you follow the same process. So I will take x as my base, and I will write the quantity of 1 eighth plus 2 thirds. Okay, and now at this point, if you really want to do it the easy way, you could just jump to your calculator, but if your teacher requires you to do this by hand, you're going to have to know that in this particular one, okay, when you're doing like denominators, you just need to have the same factor. So the quickest way of doing this is swapping the 3 and the 8 with one another, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So this is x raised to the 3 over 3 times 1 over 8, and now I got the 3, okay, just so you know from the second one. And then I'm going to do the same thing, so plus this 2 thirds times 8 over 8. Because just remember when converting fractions, you have to show, all right, what you're doing here. you got to multiply both top and bottom by the same number. So what I get here, and this is doing it the long way, if you got a calculator, just do it with a calculator, to be honest with you at this point. Um, but if not, I now have the quantity of 3 24ths plus the quantity of 16 24ths which now enables me to go ahead and add the numerators. So I get a final answer of x 
to the 19 over 24. And we can leave it just like that because we're doing operations with exponents that are rational, so we leave it in exponential form. Okay, on to the last example here. Okay, so now this is the power rule, so let's go on to this example. So the power rule states is pretty simple, okay, that if you have a group that is being raised, okay, so I have a group that's being raised to a power, what I can do is I can take every base on the interior and simply multiply the exponents of theirs times the one being raised by the group. So what I will write here is I will write x and I will take one-fifth and multiply it by four-thirds. And it does help to write it out. I would show this little step in work because as it gets more and more, you don't want to get confused with it. Okay, so here we go. When you multiply fractions, though, just remember, multiplying fractions is just numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and you're left up with 1 times 4 is 4, and 5 times 3 is 15, and there you go. You're done. Okay, just another example. Now I just gave you some more variables. I didn't just use uh, 1 this time. So, so here we go. All right. Now, in this example, same thing. I'm going to write x, that's my first base, and I will write 1 half, and I will get to multiply it by the, the exponent on the group. So I get to multiply this by 10 thirds, and then I will take y, and I will do the same thing with its exponent, okay? So its exponent also gets to multiply the exponent on the outside. Some people like to call this shorthand script for distribution of the exponent, okay? So at this point, I'm just going to clean up my work and do some things. So if you want to do multiplying, it's a matter of you how you do it, but I am old school, so doing this by hand, what I will look for is factors in either of the denominators of my fractions that simplify with any factor that's in the numerator. So in this first one, what I notice is that 2 can reduce with 10. So what that leaves me with is that 2 and 10 reduces to 5 over 1. And now at this point, I will go ahead and multiply this one. So x equals 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 3 is 3 in the denominator. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Okay, so the next example has 3 fifths times 3 fifths times 10 thirds. And again, I will look for factors in the numerator that could reduce with factors in the denominator. And one of the things I see very nicely right away is that 3 reduces with 3, and it becomes 1 over 1. And I also notice that 5 reduces with 10, okay, and f uh, 10 over 5 becomes 2 over 1. So now my final answer is what's 1 times 2 and what's 1 times 1? And two, 1 times 2, okay, is going to be, so take my y, sorry, I forgot my base down there. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 1 is 1. So for this final answer, 2 over 1, I'm not necessary to write like that, just like that, and I am done. This is my final answer. All right, final one of there. Let's move on to the quotient rule. Okay, time for the quotient rule. So the quotient rule states that the exponent in the numerator will subtract the exponent in the denominator. So again, I will take my base of x, and I will write it as a group, and I will take the numerator's exponent, which is a hidden 1, so 1 minus 2 thirds. Now again, for this one, I'm just going to do mental math because 1 minus 2 thirds, I'm hoping you can easily figure out that that's just going to be 1 third. And then I'll be done with that one. So make those ones quick. All right. And on to B. So B has x to the 4 thirds divided by x to the 1 6. So I notice like bases. So I will take one base and I will write the quantity of the numerator subtracted by the denominator. Okay, and now for these ones again, I notice that uh, the denominators are different, so I do have to make them like. So in this case, I can kind of do this one by hand kind of quickly just by multiplying top and bottom by 2. And what I will get is x equals, so this becomes the quantity of 8, 6, minus 1, 6, which leaves me with x over to the 7, 6, and then I will be done. So there that is. So. Um, I know I went kind of quick here, but I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter uh, than the last one I had. So the next page we're going to have is just examples. And here are some of your example problems that I want you to try. Um, go ahead, go through them. And uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to me and let me know. All right.